Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And yes, we are not in the garage. We are at Tom Lenthal's workshop, who has been working on my Jaguar XJ Coupe V12 manual. And the last time we were here, I was going through what we've done. We sort of gave up with that um, original fuel injection system, and he was putting the new system on alongside an Emerald ECU and all sorts of trickery. Since then, it has been completed and the car has been set up on the dyno and we both got a bit of surprise on the figures it produced and I've come down today to collect the car finally a properly working XJ Coupe so I am a teeny bit excited after all the nightmares we've had trying to get this car running properly today's the day when I drive away and I can finally get to enjoy it anyway let's go around the corner go see Tom Tom this is it then yeah, it's, we're all done. It's ready. It is ready. Yeah, yeah no, I'm very pleased with it. Really yeah. excited. Excited yeah. for you to drive it, actually. Oh, I can't wait. Just it's to... been a bit of a wait to drive it properly. Yeah, no, it's definitely and... been, a, it's been a challenge, hasn't it? Yeah, and you've said some very nice things. You've been out in this, haven't you? You've I've done it. about 200 miles in it now. Have you really? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so I know it's, uh, it's yeah. thoroughly tested. Yeah. Yeah. Well... So. So we have a look? You want to have a look and done. see what we've yeah, been doing? See what you've actually I know done. you did pop down the other day and had a look at some of it, but yeah. this is it completed. That is quite different, isn't it? Well, yeah. funny enough, if you didn't know, you'd just yeah. open that, you'd think that was absolutely as it came out of the factory, wouldn't you, actually? Looking uh, at that. That's what I like to try and achieve. It's, I, don't, I like modifications that look like they're meant to be there. Yeah. I don't like to um, do stuff that sort of, you know looks half-hearted or whatever, or it's, um, you know, been bodged in there. If, it's, if you're going to put it in, you might as well make it look as factory as possible. Enough, that's as close as I can get, I think. And I think we can safely say, when you normally open the bonnet on a V12 Jaguar yep. it, of this period, they're not the prettiest of things, are they? No, there's a lot of pipe work going on all over the place. <laughs> Madness it, going on. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter how much I plate things and make it and detail it and make it look lovely. They're just, it, they, it's yeah. a bit of a, it's a bit higgledy-piggledy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it was interesting looking through the comments. They thought we should have carried on chasing to find out what the actual issue was. But they're welcome was. to. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. You've, you've made a living from it, and yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd had enough. <laughs> yeah. Every owner who's tried that technique have had enough, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that it isn't achievable, but life's too short for Yeah, you. and yeah. I think the other thing you have to remember, in the 70s, this was very much emerging in fuel injection they hadn't sorted it at all oh, no, they no, were no. experimenting on the cars I mean, well once xjs I, you know he that's a different development of the injection system that's again, that's that's a whole different yeah. thing it evolved to a standard where yeah. it was a lot more reliable and certainly a lot more fuel efficient as well and it got to this stage so this is the last evolution if you look at the the injectors yep. and the intakes that's still Jaguar, but it was the system yeah. once they'd got it sorted. So this systems, was the yeah. um, last of line um, six litre cars. So that's, that's the injection manifold that I use is sort of 93, 94 up to 96, um, that year of six litre. And that's when you get the square fuel rails right. um, with the, um, um, with with the um, yeah, straight down injectors with the Bosch injectors. And in a way, that adds to the cost because they're starting to get a bit hen's teeth, people who want the six litre manifold. Yes, isn't yeah, it? I think this is, this is going to be my only stumbling block. But every time I see one of these um, for sale or whatever, I just buy them and I, um, I, yeah. I've stockpiled as many as I can. Because I, and then, of course, what's going to happen is these will eventually run out and then I'll have to come up with some other modification to make the Try earlier make ones work. work. And just to say what was different on this, the bit I wanted to keep from the old injector system mm -hmm. was my air box and my bigger airflow meters that we found, you know, when we calculated throttle bodies, throttle something. bodies sorry, 35% yeah, right. um, bigger. Yeah, so what I had to do in this instance was we took a set of manifolds as we normally do, um, and then I had to have them machined and opened up to a larger bore to, um, so that we match the ports of your throttle bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was quite surprised at the results. So yes. Well, we're going to get to the dyno bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, it's all tidied up up here because we don't need any of those vacuum sensors. In yeah, the, the absolute manifold pressure sensor and the resistor pack has gone and lots of wiring's gone. Yeah. yeah. And a whole lot more wiring has gone in. So you've taken the mm. old wiring loom yeah. out, which is, I see is it's on the bench there. over there, yeah. Yeah, so, so it, this is a, we make our own wiring loom, so we make all of the 
Um, these are all the injector wiring, and then you've got wiring down for the coils. There's wiring going down to the front for the crank position sensor, oh, and yeah. then it all comes up to a multi-plug underneath here, which then weans its way off into the car uh, mm, to the ECU. ECU. Yeah. yeah. Do you know, we probably ought to just let on what happened on the dyno, shouldn't we? <laughs> Do you think? I get my, I got a crib seat. Have you, have you got one, have you? Yeah. No, I brought some original brochures down. Jagger, <laughs> two dual saloon car range, XJ 5.3C and um, 4.2C, and also V12 brochure for their new engine, which is, must be 60. Was it a sales brochure? Yeah, I think so. I wow. just, yeah, for loads of swarf. It looks like it's wow. the blacksmith the sort of beating yeah, yeah, it yeah. from <laughs> iron on an anvil or something. But anyway, it's a Lord mad, of the Rings, I, isn't it? Have a look. <laughs> but the power, quoted hmm. power. So go on, was it say standard? What, what, standard. Should, what should we have? Well, the, the one surprise when we get to um, the 5.3, the V12, was how low the power is on the 4.2. Yeah, they're the rubbish. 4.2 yeah. is 170 horsepower. Yeah. Torque is 231 pound foot. The 5.3 was 285 horsepower, 115 horsepower more yeah. than the 4.2. Torque, 294 um, pound foot of torque. So yeah, fair jump there as well. Yeah. But it was that 100, 100, you know, that you'd notice that if you had either 4.2 or 5.3, oh four, my goodness. 4.2s with the automatic gearbox are just, oh God, they, you put your foot down and it's like, oh, some, you know, <laughs> you are literally waiting for something to happen. Yeah. They're a lot better with the manual. They are, they're, they're, they're fine. They're transformed. Yeah, oh, they are transformed yeah. with the manual. As I know with this car. Um, which is, um, as we said in the other, the other day, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing and we're going down the supercharged route and we'll see yeah. what happens, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, but you want to know what this has got now? Wants. Well, you right, know. Uh, well, uh, what I'm going to do now is actually run the dyno. you will join us on the dyno. Um, Tom very kindly sent me this clip of it actually on the dyno, and then you'll see the power right at the end. surprised by that number weren't we when we saw you know, yeah 42 and yeah. that torque figure the torque figure was yeah i mean it's huge huge and it's uh i didn't uh i didn't expect to get that much out i thought we were going to be i was going to say anything around you know i normally get around about 300 out of a good engine i'm happy with that yeah. with this fuel injection system when we swap it over and i thought okay we've got the exhaust and the throttle bodies and all the rest of it um you know i'm thinking three 25 on good, a good. on a good yeah. day yeah um and we you, actually you yeah. know i sent you a message and a video yeah but then we did a couple more power runs just to tweak it and see what more we could get and we actually ended up with 349.68 so, so 350 350 horsepower, 350 horsepower. From, from 285 horsepower we've gone yeah up. Good Lord. Yeah, yeah. That, so, that, so that's, yeah, 65. 65, 65 horsepower more. Yeah. I thought it was only 58 horsepower more. That was 20% more. Yeah. So we're a bit more, about so 22, 22, 23. 23%, yeah. And torque, 507 uh, Newton meters, yeah. puts us at 374 pound foot of torque from 294. Yeah. So we've gone up 28%, 80 yeah. pound foot of torque, which yeah. is big numbers so i'm really but you know what you got to remember is this is also standard engine yeah standard, standard camshaft standard pistons valves, pistons, valves. we didn't do anything with the engine other than just to you know replace components as necessary and give it an overhaul and that's also the reason i want to go for this fuel injection because it maximizes it enhances whatever you're playing with the mm. uh, precise injection those it's really interesting those throttle bodies bigger throttle bodies and the air intake and then mm. the exhaust manifolds it's just basic principles on engines get yeah. air more air in and more air the more air you out. can get in the more you can get out the yeah. more you can burn yeah the bigger the bang and 350 and it's in with the big boys i looked up i mean the thing it's I mean, we're not trying to turn this into some crazy car but it's 1800 no. kilos but that is a very healthy output for a 1977 yeah. car I was looking at my Sparda, 350 horsepower, matches that, but 290 pound foot of torque, mm -hmm. this thing 374, massively yep. more. Ferrari Daytona, yep. 347 horsepower, 
So we now beaten that. Okay. You know, Ferrari. I'll take a win. Yeah, yeah I'll take. and three hundred eighteen pound foot of torque. Yeah. So significantly more torque from the Jaguar, which is the five point three hmm. liter, I suppose. Aston V eight. They didn't actually, a bit like Rolls Royce, didn't really put their horsepower figures out. Yeah. But it's reckoned the normal V8 was 300 horsepower, 301 pound foot, so hmm. way down on this. And the same weight as this as well, yeah. an Aston V8. The Vantage, supposedly 370 horsepower, 379 pound foot of torque. So just over where we are hmm. now. But you had to go to Vantage spec to, yeah, get, to, anywhere to get anywhere close to, to this. this is. Yeah. And then we've put the um, shorter diff in it, manual. So yeah. I just can't wait, Tom. No, you, you just need to drive it because it's, you know, it just makes me smile. Yeah. Yeah, no, the grin factor out of this car now is just, yeah. Proper, well, yeah, yeah, off the scale. Yeah, it's really good. I, I really cannot wait. So it's been a bit of a journey. And mm. now it just starts on the key and it just works all 12 cylinders. It's not much to yeah. ask, is it, after all this? Well, no, you wouldn't think so. <laughs> would think, well, I just wish yeah. I'd listened to you in the first place. I probably would have oh, saved, yeah. I reckon, about five grand or thereabouts, actually. Probably, around uh, about that sort of money. So yeah, right yeah. at the beginning this was the right way to go but we didn't quite know that those throttle bodies and we're all going to get anyway so what i'm going to do now is disappear off and yeah. drive it on some proper roads yeah i but think you need to road test it yeah. yeah yeah but thank you tom for all this work no, i hope now it's just regular servicing and things like that yeah, i yeah. have to pop down for but. we forgot i mean the other thing we've got to mention of course is the exhaust which probably added a bit of horsepower as well I cannot wait to try this. Has he got the handbrake on? There's no lights on. They were all good to go. Now getting why I'm going to my better bits of road is around Tom's workshop. You know, it's on an industrial state. There's some evil speed bumps to go over on the way out. And yeah, it's not particularly friendly. And I've also got a fair bit of motorway to do as well. So I'm going to disappear off. Here's the first of the speed bumps. Yeah, I'm going to disappear off. And then you'll be joining us on some better roads in a moment. And we'll just see what this car is all about. Well, I'm 80 miles in now and I've been pleasantly surprised, as you'd probably expect, uh, how refined it is actually. And it doesn't, it's not um, crazy noisy. I was worried about that exhaust, first time I've actually driven it with that exhaust fitted. But no, I actually measured it on my little bit of road just because I thought this is quite, this is 73 decibels, 73, 74 decibels. And there's a sharper throttle response as well. But it's quite busy, the traffic today, so I haven't really exercised it, so I'm quite looking forward to it. You know what, I'm going to go down to second for this little squirt up the hill. This, oh, what a sound it is. It's, it is really quite cultured. Not what I was expecting, actually. I mean, it's just a glorious and slight rasp comes in at about sort of four or five. But yeah, you, you sort of end up going quicker than you expect, which is always a good sign in a car, because you just want to hear that sound. It's just the, the ease and effortlessness that V12 now offers. I can, I can hear a little bit of wind noise around the pillars, I don't know if that's coming up on the camera, but basically it's pretty hushed in here. And also, if I let the, the revs really fall away, there's 1500 revs flat out at 1500, not a stutter, not nothing. That Emerald ECU just doing its work. How many revs is that? I might get the So easy to heel and toe in this car. so easily. It just feels absolutely sorted. I am not thinking, oh, it's nearly 50 years old, this car. It's, it's extraordinary. I think the great thing about choosing Jaguar is it's always been a car for enthusiasts. You go all the way back, E-Type, Mark II, wherever, how far back you want to go, but it was the enthusiast choice. 
So there's always been enhancements available to this car and this I think has the pick of them. This the steering feel. I don't where do I begin? Momo wheel, transformative, just the feel after that wood rim you normally got, the big rim. Manual gearbox, extraordinary, just changes the character of the car completely. Because the three-speed auto is a very slushy three-speed, very quiet, all for refinement. Manual taps you into that V12, which is a gem, just wants to rev. Then we've got the brakes, I've upgraded the brakes, just different pads, same, same discs and things, but just better pads. Lowered suspension, stiffer springs, dramatically um, stiffer springs and damper setter. But the, it just doesn't feel Jaguar, what you expect Jaguar to feel like. But it doesn't feel crazy stiff either. So that's really nice. Engine. Yes, I've put all that injection system. All I've done though is opened up its breathing potential. So it's not cammy, it's not poppy and sort of flat at the bottom end. It's just what you want this car to do. started up because he actually enjoyed sharing the passion and his expertise. He'd probably be doing race cars as well as the um, Jaguar road cars etc. But for me, yeah, finally got the car I wanted. It's 
been quite a journey. I'm glad you've sort of been along the ride, the highs and lows. But this is it. You're going to see a lot more of this car. I'm just going to use, just drive the wheels off. It's another car in the garage I'll be itching to use all the time. It's just sort of usable. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing for more videos coming on very soon. Thank you.